Welcome to this College of Communications digital video tutorial. This video will cover the basic features of the Nikon D7200 digital SLR camera. The D7200 is available through MediaTek. You can sign it out from there uh, Monday through Friday. It's a great camera, offers a host of features and options. We're really lucky to have them available to us through Penn State. It can take beautiful still photos. It can also shoot video. Um, it's also a very complicated camera and it's worth understanding the various features before you dive in and start using it. If you're new to using the camera, especially if you're new to using a DSLR, you're going to want to make sure you set up the camera properly before you start an assignment. Think about a pilot going through their pre-flight checklist. If you don't want to crash and burn metaphorically, then use this video and the accompanying D7200 cheat sheet as your pre-flight checklist. Go through each of the items on the list before you start shooting the assignment, make sure your camera is set up properly, and then you can really focus on taking pictures instead of worrying if the camera is functioning properly. This is not designed as an everything you always wanted to know about the D7200 but were afraid to ask tutorial. It is designed to get you familiar with the camera and the terminology to start you on the way. We will go over this material again in class, and you'll get many opportunities during the semester to put this knowledge to work and to ask questions and figure out things that you still don't understand. The D7200 was introduced in 2015, and it replaced the D7100, which had replaced the D7000 before that. MediaTek has all three cameras available to sign out. The 7200 and the 7100 are almost identical. This tutorial will prepare you for either of those cameras. The D7000 is slightly different, so you may have to figure out where a button has been moved to if you end up with that camera. The big advantages of the D7200 are improved image quality, especially in low light, and better and faster autofocusing. Ask for the D7200 if possible at MediaTek. If you end up with the 7100 or even the 7000, they'll work well, but the 7200 will give you the best results. The camera kit you get from MediaTek will include the camera body, an attached 18 to 140 zoom lens, a charger for the camera battery, and a camera manual hidden in the front pocket of the camera bag. Let's work our way through this pre-assignment checklist and set the camera up properly. I strongly encourage you to have the printout of the checklist in front of you, and if you don't have it at this point, stop the video, go sign out at D7200, and have the physical camera in front of you as you work your way through the rest of this video. The D7200 cheat sheet is on the handouts page of my website, along with a number of other tutorials. Go to willyerman.com teaching, click on handouts, and then on the D7200 cheat sheet. My suggestion is you print out the handout or make notes to yourself and go through that checklist the first few times you sign out the camera to make sure you have all the settings set properly. All right, let's begin. We'll start with the battery. The battery compartment is on the bottom of the camera. Open the compartment door and you'll see a small yellow lever. Slide that back and the battery should pop free. Always check the battery level. The indicator is on the top of the camera before heading out on an assignment. To turn the camera on, rotate the slider around the shutter release button on the top of the camera to the on position. Just to be clear, the shutter button is what you'll use to actually take a photo. The first thing you want to do if you've just signed out the camera is reset all of its basic settings. You have no idea what the last student was doing with the camera, and you don't want to find out the hard way. There are two buttons with green dots next to them, one on the top right of the camera and one on the back of the camera, lower left. Press them simultaneously and hold them until the display on the top of the camera flashes. This resets the camera to its default settings. Next, you'll want to erase and format the SD card. The SD card is the small storage card in the camera that holds all the pictures or video that you've taken. Formatting deletes everything on the card, so don't do this if you've already been using the camera. But the idea is to start with a clean slate. Formatting the card also cleans up the card's internal lists and codes, making it less likely that something will go wrong as you're working on an assignment. The SD card is stored on the side of the camera. Slide open the door, press on the card, and it's spring-loaded and should pop out. You'll see there are two slots for SD cards. If you were on a long shoot or shooting a big video project, you might want to add a second card to hold additional photos or files. 
Be careful with that card. The metal contacts are delicate. Don't force it into the camera. If you've entered it the wrong way or at an angle, pull it gently out and start again. Remember that you are financially responsible for the equipment that you sign out from MediaTek or from the Carnegie Equipment Room. Formatting the card is a two-step process because Nikon doesn't want you accidentally deleting everything on your card. There are two buttons with the word format in red next to them. One is on the top of the camera next to the shutter button and the other is the trash can button on the back left of the camera, sort of at the top left. Look down at the display on the top of the camera and press both of those buttons at the same time until the display flash flashes F-O-R. If it doesn't happen after a couple of seconds, let go, press them both again, and this time it should work. Remember, the camera needs to be on when you're formatting the card. Once F-O-R flashes, let go of both buttons, then immediately press them both again. You should see the counter on the display reset and this should format your card, erasing any of the photos that were on there. So good, we've got the camera reset, the card cleaned up. Let's set some of the basic settings on the camera so you're ready to go out and take some pictures. The camera has a diopter that lets you adjust the viewfinder to your vision. If you wear glasses, you may want to adjust the camera. If the person who had the camera before you wore glasses, they may have adjusted it. If everything looks a little blurry when you look through the camera, and especially as you look through the camera if the display at the bottom, which gives you information about exposure, isn't sharp, you probably need to adjust the diopter to your vision. Just turn the small dial right to the right of the viewfinder until the um, display at the bottom of the camera comes into clear focus. Next step is to set the ISO. You may wonder what ISO is or what it stands for. It represents how sensitive the camera is to light. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive the camera becomes, which means you can shoot in darker situations, use faster shutter speeds, etc. ISO is part of the exposure triangle, one of the three ways along with shutter speed and aperture that we control exposure. Cameras keep getting better and better, but at higher ISOs, image quality can suffer. We generally shoot at lower ISO settings if we can. The D7200 can make beautiful photos at even very high ISOs, so don't be afraid to turn that setting up to high if need be. In general, we use the lower settings when we're outside during the day and start turning up the ISO as we move indoors or are shooting at night. The camera's ISO range is from 100 to 25,600. Since each doubling of the ISO means a doubling of the camera's sensitivity, ISO 25600 is 256 times more sensitive to light than ISO 100. At the very high settings, the image will not look nearly as good as those lower settings. Try not to go above 6400 unless it's the only way to get a photo. Typically, outside on a bright sunny day, you might be at ISO 100, 200, 400. As you move indoors into, say, a brightly lit classroom, you might be in the 800 or 1600 range. And when you get into darker situations, that's when you'll start hitting those higher numbers of 3200 or 6400. A quick word about the camera's command dials. There are two knobbed rings on the front and back of the camera near the shutter button. These are the front and rear command dials, and we'll use them to change settings on the camera. To change the ISO, for example, press and hold the ISO button on the back left of the camera. The screen will display the current ISO. The front command dial changes the setting from auto to manual. Make sure it's on manual so that the auto doesn't display. The rear command dial changes the actual ISO, anywhere from 100 all the way up to 25,600. Okay, so now let's set the white balance. Different lights look different. Daylight is very different from fluorescent lights, for example. Your own eye makes adjustments for that, but we need to tell the camera what kind of conditions we're shooting under. If your camera is improperly set, your subjects can look like Oompa Loompas from Willy Wonka. Setting the white balance to match the conditions will give you the best image quality. The camera has an auto setting for white balance, and to start, let's use that. It works well for most situations. As you get more comfortable, or if you don't like the results you're seeing, you can start using the other white balance settings. You can tell by the symbols some are specific to, say, a cloudy day, or a fluorescent light, or in the shade of a house, for example. We set white balance by holding the white balance button, labeled WB, and using the back command dial. Auto 1 is the auto setting. The front command dial is for customizing any setting, and in general you can leave this one alone. 
Let's move on to autofocus and set the camera up to focus properly. The lens on your camera needs to focus, and you can do that manually by turning the front ring on the lens, but the camera is very good at autofocusing, and we usually will use autofocus on our assignments. First, you must turn on the autofocus on both the lens and the camera, otherwise the camera won't, won't autofocus. On the left side of the camera is a switch. Turn it to AF. The lens has its own switch. Set it to A. Remember, both the camera and the lens need to have autofocus turned on. There are different ways to configure the autofocus on the camera. Typically, pressing the shutter release button halfway activates the autofocus. Press harder and you take a photo. So, do you want the camera to, say, lock on a subject and then stop autofocusing? Or, focus continuously? Do you want to focus on a single point that you set and can adjust? Or, have it focus on a section of the viewfinder? Or even pick where to focus all by itself? The camera can be set up to do any of these variations and more, to be honest. Notice that the autofocus switch on the side of the camera can also be depressed and functions as a button. Press and hold that button and notice, notice the display on the top of the camera. You'll see the autofocus menu. To set our autofocus, we press and hold the button on the side of the camera. We turn the back command dial, or control knob, while we're still holding the button. You'll see that three modes are available to us, AFA, AFC, and AFS. AFA is an auto mode, and we won't use that one. AFC means autofocus continuous. The camera is going to just keep focusing all the time on whatever it's pointed at, even as the subject moves. AFS means autofocus single. The camera will lock focus on your subject and then stop focusing. This means you can focus on something and then say recompose. As long as you keep pressing the shutter button part, part way down, that subject will stay in focus. We are going to use the AFC, the AF continuous mode to begin, and we'll add a trick to that in just a moment. Set the camera to AFC, and while still holding the AF button on the side of the camera, now use the front command knob. This changes what part of the view the camera uses to focus. In AFC mode, you can switch between Auto and 3D, which are both auto modes, and then you'll see D51, D21, D9, and then S for single. In the D51, 21, and 9 modes, the camera uses a group of points to focus. We're going to start with the S mode, the single mode. The camera will focus on the single point. As you look through your camera, you'll see a small square that lights up as red inside the viewfinder. Whatever you point that at, that's what the camera is going to focus on. Feel free to experiment with the other modes, but for now avoid the auto and 3D settings. What happens if you focus on a person's face but want to place them off-center? If the red square moves off their face, the camera will focus on what's behind them, and they'll be blurry. We have two easy ways to fix that in the AFC mode. We can actually move that square. Use the rocker switch on the back of the camera, and you can slide that square left, right, up, and down, change which part of the frame the camera focuses on. If you know your subject is going to be on the right side, you can simply slide that square over to the right, and they'll stay in focus. Or we can use the autofocus lock button to temporarily stop the camera from focusing and hold the focus. On the back of the camera, to the left of the command knob, is a small button. It says AFL. It also says AEL. If you press that with your thumb, the camera will lock, will hold focus, lock focus on whatever it had been focusing on, and you can now recompose the camera. You've temporarily stopped the camera from autofocusing to hold focus at a particular point. You can get pretty good and pretty fast with a little practice at using your thumb to turn the focus on and off as you frame and focus on your subject. Now let's talk about exposure. Exposure simply means how much light enters the camera for a photo. The dial on the top left of the camera shows us different uh, modes, different settings for setting the proper exposure. The green auto setting is the point and shoot method. That gives the camera total control of exposure, and we're not going to use that one. We want to be in control of the pictures we take. To begin, let's use the M setting, M for manual. This means you will set both the shutter speed, how long the shutter is open, and the aperture, how wide that opening is. Shutter speeds are usually in fractions of a second, could be a hundredth, a five hundredth, a thousandth of a second. 
The smaller the fraction, the faster the shutter speed. Faster shutter speeds let in less light. They also do a better job of freezing the motion, of giving you a sharper photo. Aperture is represented in a series of fractions as well. You might see 1 over 2.8 or 4 or 5.6. We usually only see the bottom number. We don't see it represented as a fraction. And we usually see the letter F in front. These are sometimes called F numbers or F stops. Again, as with fractions, the smaller the fraction, the less light. An aperture of 1 8 represented as F8, is smaller than 1 4th, represented as F4. So that F8 number, even though it looks bigger, is actually letting in less light. This can get confusing at first, but after a while it does become second nature. But remember that with both the aperture and the shutter speed, the bigger that number, the less light we're allowing into the camera. I mentioned the exposure triangle earlier when I was talking about ISO, and these are the other two parts of that triangle. While setting your shutter speed and aperture in manual mode, use the front command dial for the aperture and the back knob for shutter speed. As you look through the camera's viewfinder, you'll see a display at the bottom that shows you the exposure you're setting. You'll also see a meter, a series of dotted lines with a zero in the center. You can see the same meter on the top display of the camera. As you change aperture and shutter speed, that line will move. Proper exposure is usually when you get that line at or close to the zero. You adjust ISO first and then shutter speed and aperture to allow for the proper exposure, the proper amount of light to give you a good exposure for that photo. The line itself, the dotted line, will disappear and line up just under the zero. Remember that if your shutter speed is too slow, your photos will be blurry. A good rule of thumb is to use a shutter speed above 1 one hundredth of a second. You might need to go even faster if your subject is moving or if you're using a big lens. If you can't get to that fast a shutter speed, you may need to either turn up your ISO or use a larger aperture, which would be a smaller number, to let in more light. You'll play with those three settings to get the proper exposure, and again, it will get easier with practice. Take a few test photos, play around with exposure, and you'll start to see what we mean by having exposures that are too dark or too light or just right. Just a few more things on the checklist, and then you can get shooting. We want to set the camera to take photos continuously for as long as the shutter button is depressed. Remember that the shutter button is that button on the top of the camera that actually takes the photos. The dial around the knob on the top left of the camera sets what we call the motor drive of the camera, how fast or how many pictures the camera will take. For now, set it to CH for continuous high. If you happen to be on an assignment in a place where you want to take a single picture at a time, because you don't want to be distracting, say, in a church or in a classroom or somewhere else where you're worried about um, distracting the people around you, you can change that setting to S for single. And then the camera will take just one single photo every time you press the shutter button. We also want to set the image quality. How will that picture be stored on the card? What kind of quality settings? By holding the quality button and turning the front command knob, we have a number of settings available to us. Typically, to begin, we're going to set that to Fine, which is the best quality JPEG setting. If you've been taught about RAW files and want to shoot RAW, that's an option as well. The front command dial controls the image size. Use L for large for the largest possible file size. Okay, phew, that's a long list, a big checklist. I know it can seem overwhelming the first couple of times, but make sure you go through everything on it and make sure your camera is set properly, and then you should be able to get started and not have to worry as much about the technical problems the camera can present. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope it helps. I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions, we'll go over them in class, and you'll get more familiar with how the camera works the more you use it.